All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from San Diego in the US of A as usual. And today I'm joined from Melbourne in Australia by Maria Radish. How are you doing, Maria? I'm great. How are you? I'm really good as well. And, uh, and what we're going to talk about today is this fascinating subject about how to thrive as a human being uh, in the crazy kind of world that we live in today, the fast-paced world. And Maria is a keynote speaker, TEDx speaker, thought leader on intentional adaptability, uh, human potential, and how to thrive as a human being in the 2020s. Um, Maria's had um, like three different careers, lawyer, a university lecturer, interpreter in five different languages. Always puts me to shame. I'm barely, uh, I barely speak one language, actually. But... Um, and she holds nearly a dozen degrees uh, from universities and other qualifications. Okay, so how to thrive as a human being now, you say, is a puzzle. And this well-being puzzle is getting more and more complex as our lives become more fast-paced. And then obviously layer in the global pandemic on top of that, just for good measure. And, and it's, it's a really complex world. So talk to me a little bit about this, this idea of the well-being puzzle. Well, one thing that everyone agrees on is that in order to um, to make it, <laughs> the main skill is adaptability. So it's the most adaptable who survives, not the one who's smarter or stronger. Um, mm. So everyone, everyone agrees on that. But I rarely hear anyone highlighting the difference between adaptability just to merely survive and adaptability to actually thrive in the modern world. And these days it is quite a puzzle. There's a lot of pieces to it. This is what I'm doing through my research and through my talks. I'm putting those pieces of the puzzle together one by one. Um, and in particular in my first book, um, I highlight that um, we should always look at three areas of our life and we should build for ourselves a so-called chair of resilience, a three-legged chair of resilience. And before I go into that, I'd also want to um, highlight that um, we keep chasing happiness. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what the majority of us are doing. This is what I was doing most of my life. But I came to realize that actually the solution is not happiness. Happiness is a byproduct. The solution to a lot of issues that we're facing, including depression and anxiety, is actually becoming more resilient. So mm -hmm. resilience is one of those skills that we should be building up on an ongoing basis. So I talk yeah. about the three-legged chair. <laughs> So let me just ask you, just on that uh, idea of, of resilience, because, you know, particularly today, I would say we live in this strange world of shortcuts and, um, and it's almost like resilience is, it, it, people are taught the opposite of resilience. It's like, if it's not easy, if it's in any way difficult at all, then that's a, that's a problem with it, not with me. And so we're 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 raising like generations of people who 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 were not giving any sense of resi or any kind of resilience to because we're trying to make the world as easy and simple as for them as possible even though it's not like that that's a great point absolutely we are now chasing short term rewards instead of learn mm -hmm. long term rewards and through most of our existence um it was the other way around. So we're still getting used to it. Uh, and of course, um, you know, having food available in Western world 24 seven mm -hmm. and uh, us having mobile phones and all the technology around us, uh, of course, um, it rewires our brain to be less patient <laughs> and yeah. feel more entitled. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All those things. And I think it's at least a, a byproduct of what's happened to us this year. I think it's at least maybe it has tested some of the hypotheses on that and people maybe are realizing that they need to have something more. So let's talk about resilience as this three-legged chair. What, what's the first leg? The most important leg is at the back and it's our physical and mental health. And I talk about it as one leg, not two separate ones because they both intertwine. And mm -hmm. I don't understand when they're being separated. And this is what usually happens that either uh, we address our physical health or we address our mental health or we talk about one or the other, but they actually have to be addressed both at the time because they intertwine and they affect each other. Yeah. Um, so this leg is the most important because imagine if that leg at the back is missing or it's 
it's too short or it's wobbly, how uncomfortable is going to to sit on that chair. Mm -hmm. And that chair of resilience is supposed to be strong and sturdy and helpful uh, in case when things happen, so you can actually stay in place instead of falling down. So that leg at the back is the most important one. And just one thing on that is that most people, as you know, um, when it comes to physical and mental health, like most people are very, you know, quite confident in that about talking about the physical health or addressing the physical health issues. But the mental health, not so much. Uh, you know, keep that kind of hidden in the background. Um, that's you know that often goes unaddressed. Uh, you know, we're living through a time now where I think probably maybe for the first time people are re- realizing how widespread mental health issues are. So I think one of those things is yes, I, I a thousand percent agree. They have to be linked. It's, it's physical health and mental health go hand in hand, and you can't address one without addressing the other. Yeah, in particular with mental health, we're not taught to express um, how, uh, express ourselves and how to ask for help or even how to accept help when it is being offered to us. Um, and we're also not taught how to help that other person when they are going through some mental challenges. I see on Facebook often... Um, not a joke, but like a poster pops up and it says something around, you know, I hurt my back and I got like 10 postcards get better and I keep getting phone calls from people. But the minute that I say that I'm feeling sad or depressed or I feel anxiety, you know, everyone disappears and it's like crickets mm-hmm. chirping. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> something that we really need to learn how to ask for help, how to get help, how to accept it, but also how to offer it as well. Very, very yeah. important. I think that's so critical is absolutely because I think sometimes people are just so um, uncomfortable culturally or whatever. It's just so uncomfortable dealing with anything to do with mental health, whether as a sufferer or as, as you said, somebody who wants to offer help or is in the orbit of that person, Um, which kind of brings us to the second leg when we talk about, you say, the quality of relationships. Absolutely. It's not the number of relationships, but the depth of our connections, the quality of our relationships. This is the second leg that helps us to be at most resilient and at most adaptable. Um, And I can't emphasize how important that is. In particular, there's a really good TEDx talk. Um, There was a study done for over 75 years where researchers were trying to find out what is key to happiness. And they learned that actually, yes, that's the quality of our relationships with other people that is key to our happiness. I won't say that it's the only thing, but it's very, very important. So um, it is something that we need to work on simultaneously. So we need to work on our well-being and we also need to work on our relationships with other people. Yeah, and it's really interesting, again, because there's a there's a cultural bias, especially nowadays, towards, uh, you know, you have to have loads of friends and, and it's all, and, and social media has made, you know, has has accentuated this idea of you measure it in quantity, as you say, rather than quality. Um, And then on the other side is people, you know, keep around people in their orbit who are really destructive or are not helping them or whatever. And they don't realize that that's that's your fault. Who you have in your orbit is your fault. It's not the other person's fault. It's your fault. And you have to ask yourself, what role are they playing for me that I would keep somebody in my orbit who is who doesn't make me feel good? Absolutely. We really need to audit our circle. I would say mm. do it at least once a year. <laughs> this year is really good to do it. Or yeah. before Christmas is really great to, you know, just reflect, uh, write people down on the list um, and Studies show that we can have proper relationships with only up to 150 people at a time. So every year I would suggest before Christmas to create that list and to consider um, who are the five top people that we want around us and we want to spend Mm -hmm. most of our time with and who are the rest of those 150 people in our circle. And those who you want, you haven't really been in touch. You can always get in touch before holidays Mm -hmm. and say, look, um, we haven't communicated often. It's been crazy year, but I really would love to um, improve our relationship. I would really would love to hear more often from you. Uh, and at the same time, decide who are the people who need to part your ways with. It's yeah. something that was very difficult for me personally. For some reason, for most of my life, I thought that if I were to part uh, 
far paths with a friend of mine, that would be me betraying them. But really it depends on a friend. You know, if they're not being yeah. respectful, if they drain your energy, it's you being disloyal to you if you continue with that person. And uh, one quote really struck me. It says that if you're not losing your friends, you are not growing. Yeah. And this is yeah. where this is where it clicked. Yes. Yes, it's yeah, um, it, it, absolutely. And 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 like I said, I mean, because you can't, it's very easy to sort of go, oh, you know, that person never she doesn't make me feel good and blah, 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 and everything. And like I said, at some stage you have to, somebody has to say to you, well, guess what? It's your fault. It's not their fault. They're only, they can't do it. They can't do this uh, if you don't have them around you. If you have them around you and you insist on maintaining this relationship, well, then it's on you. It's not on them. Absolutely. What you allow will continue. This is what I keep yep. reminding myself, in particular when it comes to relationships with people, with other people. And I had a lot of students. I worked with a lot of international students from Latin America, from Europe, from Japan, from other Asian countries. And I noticed that a lot of them actually left their countries because they wanted to get further away from their relatives, in particular, and from mm -hmm. that circle. So that that that's what they had to do just to um move move continents <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it is tricky to um to have our relationships with relatives and families and yeah. sometimes we just simply cannot do it um but i i know a lot of people that actually yeah. do it do it and they always happy about that decision they never i've never met anyone who regretted about it no no i think i think there's a, and i often said i think relationships can actually improve with every thousand miles you put between you and the other person <laughs> there is a saying in eastern europe that um the strength of love between you and your family is measured in how many kilometers separate you yeah, yeah. well i mean as somebody who moved from ireland to the u.s you know i, I did feel actually that my relationships have improved with uh, because hey and it's great because when you go home it's like you know they haven't seen you in a while and everything so people are are happy to see you so you don't get that kind of familiarity breeding contempt which is always uh, Good. So let's go on to um, the third leg, which is our fulfillment. This is uh, very important, and it's about what is it you do as a hobby or professionally or maybe a charity work that you're doing. So it's something that makes you feel fulfilled, that there is that you're creating um, that grander meaning to your life, and you're really helping the world and you're helping others. So that's the third leg that's very, very important. What unfortunately happens is that men usually focus predominantly on the third leg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and women usually, not not everyone, of course, but women usually focus more on the second leg, on the relationships. But all three legs, uh, they have to be taken care of. You have to work on all three of them. They're not just going to magically appear out of the blue, whether they're talking about health or relationships or kicking goals. Um, you have to put work into it and um, not feel entitled or... You know, mm -hmm. I think oh, it just happens or it just happens to others. If someone has that strong chair with all three legs uh, there being properly, it means that they put on work to create it for themselves. Yeah, and, and, that, and that leads us into just the last piece uh, to talk about is confidence, right? Because if you have the three legs of your stool, right, um, then you can start to build the confidence to really create the life you you want and you talk a lot about confidence i know you have your ebook uh, coming out soon um just in a quick just give us an idea of what do you mean by confidence what is confidence and what is confidence not confidence is a skill and it completely blew my mind when I learned it. So it's not something that we're stuck with. Yes, initially, genetically, we have a predisposition um, in terms of whether how confident we are, because mm -hmm. we inherit certain traits. And um, how confident we are is determined by our DNA to begin with. But then through our life, our confidence either increases or decreases. And usually, um, you know, when we grow up and when we're teens, we hear no so many times. And this is really decreases our confidence, in particular when it comes to women. We hear no more often. We get frowned upon more things that we do. You know, God forbid a girl climbs a tree mm -hmm. <laughs> or speaks up. 
in a lot of countries. Um, but the same thing is encouraged for a boy. So usually on average also men, um, men have more confidence than women. But in any case, it doesn't really matter because it's something that you can develop. It's, uh, and it doesn't take much effort, just takes little steps that you do every day, uh, certain things. And this is what I talk about in my book in particular. And although I put confidence into the fulfillment part of my book, I believe that this is one of those skills that is very, very important, in particular because it applies to actually all three legs, whether you're building mm -hmm. relationships or um you know, you're working on yourself physically or mentally or whether it's in regards to fulfillment. Confidence is that skill that actually spreads into all three areas. And also confidence not only helps you to become more resilient, but also helps you to make uh, decisions much faster and to implement those decisions faster as well, more promptly, which is very, very, very important considering how unpredictable and fast-paced and complex world is these days. Yeah, no, no, uh, absolutely, and and I like uh, I like how you outlined that and about you know what what confidence is and what it isn't, um, and the fact that it can be developed. And I think that uh, that it, it's all about putting things in alignment, as you said, like with your three legs of the stool, and exactly. Is more the more you bring things into alignment, the more peaceful you become. Naturally, the more confident you become because you are starting to push out all those negative. Uh, negative voices and negative feelings absolutely yes yeah well this has been fantastic uh, so um so maria um you have this ebook coming out in a couple of weeks uh, how to be human in the tw in the 2020s is that right yes that's Got the correct. title correct excellent and um uh, all of maria's information will be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and, and the book that's coming out I'm striving, my mission uh, is to bring those pieces of the puzzle together because yes, there is so much information that is available out there. Uh, in particular on personal development. And when we listen to a TEDx talk and when we read a book and when we watch an interview, all those things, they do make sense to us, but they make sense to us separately. And it takes a lot of time. It takes usually years to actually put those, uh, put all that information together to connect the dots. Um, I believe if, um, if we were taught the fundamentals, the basics, the principles of human psychology and physiology, for us, it would be a lot easier to absorb those new pieces of information, whether it's a talk or a book or um, something else or a movie, um, we would be able to build it, um, put together a building, because when we see them separately and they don't have, don't have the foundation there, it's, um, it's not a building, it's more like scattered block, um, scattered bricks around the ground. But mm -hmm. if we, we are taught those fundamentals, we can build for ourselves that strong foundation and then whatever other information that we learn on top will be built into a building. Um, so this is my mission, to put those pieces together, to create this guide um, of the fundamentals, the basics, the principles that can really connect the dots uh, for everyone and help them to build their building of well-being, adaptability, resilience, all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That is fantastic. Um, I love the topic. I think it's a great, great mission. It's a very timely one. I do think people are going to emerge from this pandemic. Maybe they've had a period of greater self-reflection than normal. Maybe the, the time out has given them some opportunity to start thinking about how to calibrate their lives going forward. So I think this is a very, very timely subject. So thank you very much, uh, Maria, for sharing it with us today. Uh, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And I will see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.